Et on se retrouve aujourd'hui pour un nouveau, nouveau Forever Alone No More. Je ne sais pas le combien, je ne me souviens pas, j'ai oublié de vérifier. Donc c'est pour, à chaque fois je me trompe, The Stanley Parable. Alors je ne sais absolument pas ce que ça veut dire. Mon niveau d'anglais s'est arrêté à, à Parable, Parable, apparemment. Enfin voilà, c'est un mode pour Half-Life 2. Je ne sais pas ce qu'il vaut, mais en tout cas il vient d'être euh, euh, greenlighté. Steam a donné le feu vert, donc il sera dans la boutique Steam. On ne sait pas si ce sera gratuit ou, ou quoi, mais en tout cas c'est un remix HD. Ce ne sera pas celui que je vais présenter aujourd'hui. Donc ce mode a été fait par, par un groupe qui s'appelle Cake Breed et qui est sorti en juillet 2011, donc un peu plus d'un an. Et puis, et puis, et puis voilà et puis ce qu'on va faire là tout de suite, c'est que ben, on va rentrer directement dans le jeu. Ça sert à rien de parler plus longtemps. Évidemment, il faut que je me trompe de bouton, sinon ce n'est absolument pas drôle. Alors j'imagine que c'est celui-là. Oui Bingo Donc, The Stanley Parable. Nouvelle partie, j'ai jamais joué, je sais absolument pas ce que c'est. Donc on va, on, on va voir. Ça peut être intéressant. Donc là c'est le chargement avec cette bonne vieille barre Half-Life 2. Et je parle par-dessus, même si je n'ai pas grand chose à dire, juste parce qu'il faut combler. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. D'accord. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. Donc alors on incarne Stanley et euh, on a un narrateur euh, qui raconte ce qu'on fait. Alors déjà cette petite voix, accent anglais, etc. ça met déjà bien en ambiance avec la musique en plus. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Donc là, le narrateur dit que je dois rentrer dans la porte de gauche, mais je suis un peu rebelle. Je vais rentrer dans la porte de droite pour voir. This was not the correct way to the employee lounge, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. Donc là, je peux aller. Je peux revenir sur mes pas et donc regagner euh, l'allée gauche de tout à l'heure ou continuer et je vais continuer. Toujours un peu rebelle. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Maybe this is why everyone had left, 
no one wanted to be around someone <laughs> as bad at listening as him. And since he was walking into the middle of nowhere and thus ruining the entire story, Stanley decided that he <laughs> would punish himself. So when he came to the elevator and the doors opened, he stepped inside and pushed the button to go up. D'accord. Je vais aussi décider de descendre, non Oh, Stanley. You know, <laughs> you really aren't going anywhere, and I don't say that deceitfully. I truthfully mean that there isn't a story down here. The story was back up where I told you to go in the first place. Right now, you're just running around looking at empty halls. And frankly, that's perhaps even more infuriating for me. So why don't you throw me a bone, give me a chance, and just let me tell the story I want to tell, hmm? On va continuer par là. Juste pour voir. Now listen carefully. This is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Bah. Bon allez, on va obéir. Now, if you don't mind, there's something I'd like to show you. But to do that, I think it would be best for us to start from the beginning. <laughs> Évidemment. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. His job pushing buttons demanded little of him, so there was not much of himself to give. And in this way, Stanley's job felt less and less like his every day. But if buttons need pushing one day, it means they'll need pushing the next, and then the next. Yeah, so without yeah, question yeah. or judgment, Stanley continued to do what the screen told him. One keystroke flowed into another keystroke, flowed into his ride home, flowed into dinner, flowed into waking up, flowed into going to work and he was again. Chose. Stanley was typing out a complete sentence that said absolutely nothing at all. Je sais if pas in reality ça me rappelle, no one uh, ever actually disappeared from the office and Stanley never got the opportunity to make a decision to choose which path he wanted Sur to take, off, would his life still have film. any meaning? Perhaps when we long for something deeply enough, these hopes and fantasies become so strong in our minds that we truly believe that we're there, controlling that person, and living that adventure. To manipulate your own thoughts and emotions might mean freedom from a self-imposed prison. But these delusions can be fatal to those who can't tell the difference. And so, Stanley asked, if that door never opened, if I'll never be able to walk away from those people and from these buttons, is this life still worth experiencing? Am I actually happy? Stanley answered this question by pushing a button. Then he pushed a button, and then he pushed a button. Then he pushed a button. Then he pushed a button. D'accord. Alors, uh, Davy Reardon. Qu'est-ce qui ne va pas dans ta vie On va refaire une partie, on va essayer de changer, on va peut-être essayer d'obéir pour voir. C'était étrange. Je vais skipper parce que j'ai déjà fait. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Donc là je vais obéir pour voir la, la trame principale. C'est assez, assez sympa. En fait c'est faussement ouvert mais ça reste ouvert puisqu'ils ont prévu des fins pour le reste. As Stanley entered the lounge, he was horrified to find not a single person here. He decided he would walk up to see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there.
Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Entering his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. It was at this point that he began to feel dizzy and a little sick, and even thought he might pass out when suddenly he noticed a keypad next to the filing cabinet in the corner of his boss's office. Stanley had never seen this panel before and had no idea what combination of numbers would produce any result. In fact, only Stanley's boss knew this, since the panel withheld access to the boss's greatest, darkest secret. And so he had assigned the keypad a combination that only he could possibly know. The number of his freshman dorm number in college. One, nine, five, seven. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. <laughs> Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. Stanley ventured forth into the newly opened passageway. As he drew deeper into the bowels of the building, Stanley had no idea where he was or what this place held. And just as he began to think he might not discover a thing, he emerged into a long room to find Rose Le timing du dialogue est vraiment bien. Screen, screen, screens with a number above it. Stanley noticed, however, that these were not random numbers, but the number of employees who worked in the building, his co-workers. Even his own number, 427, had a place on the wall. But why a setup so elaborate, he asked. Was this simple surveillance or something even more? And as if in answer to his question, the wall slid open before him, revealing the ultimate truth of the situation. Ah, d'accord. The fuck? An enormous control panel Stanley discovered, but not one that controlled simple machinery. Buttons were labeled with emotions. Happy. Sad. Levers and knobs controlled actions. Walking, eating, doing work, or watching TV. Every input on this device monitored not the functions of a machine, but of a human being. And the reality began to sink in. Stanley, like so many other people, reduced to images on a monitor, had been under someone's control, always at the mercy of this machine. Could this have been the only reason employee number 427 was content with his boring job? That a machine had altered his emotions to accept it blindly? He began to feel an unbridled rage, and at the peak of his anger, something happened. A spark. Stanley looked up and saw the generator overhead, still providing some small amount of power to the machine, keeping it alive. And knowing that this generator was all that kept the controls running, Stanley moved to the ladder in the back of the room and began to climb towards the rafters. Special, huh? The higher Stanley climbed, the closer he felt to freedom, the further from enslavement. As he stepped through the door into the fresh outside air, a feeling of liberation rushed through Stanley's body. He had seen power, he had seen enslavement, and he had destroyed it. The underling was in control now. He had found his leading role. Stanley never discovered why everyone had gone missing, 
nor how and when he had come under the machine's control. But it didn't upset him terribly, because he knew that this was how things were meant to happen. All he felt was a delight unlike any he had ever known before. Never again would he follow someone else's orders without question. Never again would anyone tell Stanley where to go, what to do, or how to feel. No more bosses, no more instructions on a screen. Stanley decides for himself now. And he stepped out into the world, and he felt the cool breeze upon his skin, and Stanley was happy. Ok. Ça, on a un principe narratif euh, un peu à la dire Esther en fait. C'est pas dégueu. Et, euh, et je sais pas combien il y a de scénars différents. Enfin de scénar, de fin, enfin si de scénar on peut dire. Je vais continuer à, le, à y jouer, enfin à y jouer. Hum. Hum. Ah, voilà, à évoluer dans le jeu et à recommencer plusieurs fois pour voir. Mais je vous conseille de le télécharger, il pèse euh, pas très lourd, je crois que c'est 50 mégaoctets, quelque chose comme ça. Euh, il faut juste avoir Steam, même pas besoin d'Alpha 2 puisqu'il suffit d'avoir le SDK. Euh, par contre sur Mac, j'ai cru lire qu'il fallait avoir Alpha 2 mais bon, qui n'a pas Alpha 2 et, euh, et puis je vais vous laisser euh, découvrir les autres scénars, peut-être même refaire certains scénars. Et ce sera à peu près tout. Euh, C'était étrange. Petite nouvelle, petite nouveauté. Vous pouvez retrouver les vidéos sur YouTube, etc. comme d'habitude, mais en plus sur mon blog, euh, l'adresse sera dans la description, c'est euh, www.ameliore-prod.info slash c'est euh, j'ai décidé de, de bloguer, d'écrire des trucs, donc voilà. Et puis à la prochaine vidéo, je sais pas ce que ce sera, je sais pas quand ce sera, mais ce sera à un moment donné. Et puis voilà, et là il me reste plus qu'à me tromper de bouton et d'afficher le mauvaise fin bingo re bingo alors en fait le bouton c'était celui là à la prochaine pour un autre forever alone no more peut-être un peu plus long celui là je l'ai pas fait très long parce que je voulais laisser la surprise des scénars bref c'est ya